today I will talk about ROFAM. This is an efficient backward edge protection tool using reverse forward edge mappings. This is joint work between me and colleagues from the Ohio State University and Penn State University. Um, so first of all, um, software vulnerabilities. We know all software contains vulnerabilities and uh, some of the software vulnerabilities can be exploited and code reuse attacks can be performed. So for this reason, it's important to study this um, topic and to come up with solutions which mitigate this um, exploits. So for example, the, um, the common vulnerability and exposure database contains almost one fifth of all the entries are arbitrary code execution um, exploits. And for this reason, um, we need to look into this topic and to provide uh, protection techniques for this type of uh, attacks. So as we can see here, we have all kinds of patching techniques from replacing the vulnerable binary to linking a different version of a vulnerable function, replace whole software stack, upgrade hardware to different uh, variants of patching, hotfix point release, program temporary fix, security patches, service pack, unofficial pack, pack, uh, patches, multi patches. But in this work, we will be concerned about full program recompiling in order to harden the program against code reuse attacks. So our methodology uh, is like this. In the left hand side, you can see um, what kind of technique we applied for function pointer based um, calls to functions. So essentially here we construct a function signature with the number of parameters which are passed from the caller to the colleague, their types and the return type. And based on that, we can determine for all the colleagues the call sites where they are actually uh, allowed to return. So essentially that means from the places from where they are allowed to be called in the first place. And on the right side, we can see uh, what we do with uh, virtual based function calls. In this case, we build a sub hierarchy um, of all the um, um, classes in the program and basically we enforce the certain part of the sub hierarchy for the object which calls the virtual function and then basically we reflect that sub hierarchy for that particular call. So in a nutshell, what we do is in each caller um, after the um, call to the colleague, we insert an op instruction with some ID and then uh, before the function um, terminates, we basically load that ID and compare those IDs together. And in case those ID match, then we let the execution of the program continue as we stop the execution. Um, here we can see the architecture of our approach. So basically we modify the CLang LLVM compiler and in the left we can see um, how a program is um, input it in the uh, front part of the compiler. Here we collect some primitives, then we push them through the compilation pipeline. Here we build the class hierarchies, we count how many parameters each function passes, their types. We store them, we traverse the subclass hierarchies, and we assign appropriate IDs. And then we um, put those IDs and those checks in place in the back and part of the compiler and then we release the hardened application. So this means um, something like this. So here on the left we have with a, a function call of an object called x we call foo and this is the colli, the function foo and c shows the machine code for the uh, caller. Here we see that we have call q so we call this address with this register rcx D is the callee, so we see here the return function, return instruction, and in E we have the uh, caller with the knob IDs and um, knob instructions and with the IDs, and in F we have the callee with the compares and move instructions. So basically here we compare the IDs and if those match, then we allowed the control flow to continue as we can um, write a message in the log or even stop the execution of the program. Coming now to the results, um, in the upper part table we can see for all these programs that 
after compiling the progress with our uh, application, we have in GeoMean 2.77 um, return call sites per colleague for all these programs. And here we recompile those programs, only taking into account virtual function calls. In this case, we have 29 um, call sites per colleague. This is because the sub hierarchies are pretty uh, big for the programs which we analyzed. And for these programs, now we counted um, the number of instructions which can be used to craft an attack. So we can see that in GeoMean here per thousand, we have 0 0.02 instructions which are um, which can be used for performing the attack. So overall, this show very good results for our application. Then we wanted to find out which types of attacks can be mitigated and we created some attacks and those type of, of uh, five attacks from, from literature, they were published. So for example, we could mitigate with our tool any stack um, function call uh, calls to child process to early call sites to function call sites or to program um, begin and we compared with the earlier tool uh, with its version full CFL and we shown that our tool can um, mitigate all these attacks whereas this other tool cannot do this. Um, next we asked what's the security benefit and for this we analyzed those programs. We used an open source um, tool for counting how many ROP gadgets are inside the programs and we did this twice um, before hardening and after hardening with our application and after hardening we observed that we have in GeoMean less than 1% of the gadgets still available and still usable in the protected uh, application so basically this makes the life of the attacker very hard and um, the likelihood of performing the attack very low since there are not so many gadgets still available after hardening. In the end we wanted to find out what's the runtime of um, raw FAMP and for this we used the spec CPU 2017, we compiled the programs and we compared against SafeStack plus LTO, the same for raw FAMP plus LTO and we observed that in both cases we have um, under 1% which makes our tool very competitive. Then we used six JavaScript benchmarks together with the Chrome browser. We execute, we compiled the browser uh, with our tool. Then we executed the JavaScript benchmarks and we can see in both cases, in all six cases that in GeoMean we have around 3% um, runtime overhead, which makes our tool very competitive and um, usable also in production. Coming now to the discussion, here it's important to mention that um, um, the number of function returns is very important, so as lo the lower this value, then the better it is. Um, the attacker has access to legitimate gadgets, and this is an important uh, point here. Uh, our performing the attack, it's still possible with our protection in place. Red instructions improvement should be in this case uh, replaced with uh, uh, pop and jump instructions which make this equivalent and um, it makes the stitching of the gadgets more difficult for the attacker. Tail calls are currently not supported because we insert the knobs we label somehow the instructions and the places from where col uh, colleagues can uh, return to. Uh, in case of control flow banding, um, our protection can be uh, can be circumvented. We currently don't have uh, intermodular support, and the function pointer call site analysis can be improved for our application. So, in summary, our tool is a backward edge protection tool which leverages state of the art um, approach to to mitigate rope attacks for C and C++ programs. It has a, a very low geomean numbers of um, return call sites per colleague, like 1.57 and 2.77. We showed that with the Chrome browser, we have a runtime overhead of around 3%, which is very low. And our tool is compatible with currently 
available real-world C++ applications. It's readily deployable and advances the state of the art of program protection through patching. So thank you very much. And if you have questions, please go ahead and ask them. Thank you very much.